welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I'm so happy to be here because I have a program I am so eager to share because it's really moved my life in huge directions. And I have so much, I just hope I get it all in and I do it in the right order. But first I wanna thank Tim Riley, uh, an extraordinary director who just knows what camera I'm on, which always amazes me. And also I wanna thank Liz Elizabeth Parker for sending me a book called An Introduction to the Infinite Way by Joel S. Goldsmith. It's, it's a how-to book. It's a primer about how do we ever understand the infinite way. We've got 50 books, we have all these lectures. And I'm telling you, there's so much material that to thread your way, this particular book, The Introduction to the Infinite Way by Joel S. Goldsmith is perfect. And she also, with her husband Marty, sponsor for those who do not have a group, which you can find on this website, goldsmithglobal.org. You can check times when they put on a lecture. They start with a meditation. You get to hear Joel. You finish with a meditation and you are with countless others. And for many of us, <clears throat> being alone, studying the infinite way is sort of happy. I mean, there, uh, I can't find groups. But in my case, because I do this program, I'm realizing that my groups come with my website, um, I'm on YouTube. I have a wonderful time getting comments. Um, actually, if you go to awakenthedreamtv.org, that will take you right to uh, YouTube and everything else. So thank you for joining me today. And my program is called Consciousness of the Presence Gives Liberty and Freedom. Think about that. Consciousness of the Presence gives freedom and liberty. Now, Joel just really wanted his audience to know that they could have barriers to studying the infinite way. Like when I was a kid, so many mystical people were out there and metaphysical people were out there with all kinds of ideas like mind over matter, mind is God, um, mind over evil. I mean, they were really, and Jesus, you know, we're waiting for him. There were all kinds of concepts that, that Joel thinks before we can really nestle into the meaning of the infinite way, we must get rid of those barriers. So he was making suggestions about mind is God. It's not true. It's very simple that we are simply living in the presence. So with that in mind, Joel weaves a story about the Christ, about Buddha, about saints that have lived, that have learned about the presence, that have walked on water, that have become student teachers. And they share, and I'm sharing to give me hope and to give you hope that it can be done. And that's what mystics do. Mysticism is so pure. It's so simple that it can get beyond us. It's simply remembering the nature of God, which is what Joel takes us right to. What is the nature of God? And Joel wants us to know that realizing the presence is the job. Now, you know, we all meditate, we all pray, we all find ways to figure out how can I walk with this companionship every minute of every day and every night and wake up and remember. Well, that's why this program about this particular London class, he did this in 1964. And one of the things that didn't dawn on me until later was that was the year that he passed away. He was born in 92. I think he was in his early 70s. And it's, it's so interesting that he was talking to his class about coming into a room to hear him in an evening, saying, it's just a room. There's nothing in this room. You come in and what are you going to bring with you? If you don't bring anything, there's nothing. So he said, if you can really understand that what you bring in, you take out, what you cast on the water, the bread you cast on the water is yours. You have a full heart with seeing your neighbor lovingly and as yourself and as one with you. So he's passionate with this group. And he's, 
He's quite the task maker. I mean, he just said, you know, we, you don't have to come back to the next class if you actually get this. But getting the realization and the presence of God and understanding that it is quite a workout. I, I'd like to think that you set it free in the morning and it stays with you all day, but I'm getting it that we get sidetracked. We came into a dimension, as they say, mind is God, where we feel separate from God. We're victims to that. We were born into separation. We have all of this stuff going on. We have evil, we have killing, we have wars, we have disease, we have greed. It, it's a... Uh, we thought it was okay. That's what we were supposed to learn. This is the schoolroom of Earth. It's not true. All there is is one power, omnipresence. So if we are separate from God, then we'll see all of this other stuff. So we don't want to see all that other stuff. As a matter of fact, it's so interesting. I talked to someone the other day, and I was inspired because he can't watch TV anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, other than the Golden Girls and Andy Griffith, I'm having a hard time seeing the chaos and the, the killing and the hate. It's, it's something you don't want your soul to have to, I mean, I want to be, know what's going on, like Yahoo will tell me and I, I get the gist, but it's very hard if you're sensitive and you have a soul that takes it all in, you want to sleep at night and you want to be cheerful and you want to see the Christ in your enemy. Now. Joel is very, uh, first, we know we can see the Christ in our friends. That's a piece of cake in our families. But then Joel makes this point about how do you see the Christ in your enemies? He says, you know what? You can't. What you can do is know that the grace of God within you, the presence can do it for you. I like that because I've got a few folks that um, I have to be cheerful about and try and forgive. And when I call on God to do it for me, it, it's not that it takes me off the hook, but in a sense, it makes me feel better that the grace of God, which is what I've got, what we've all got, we all came in with grace. We can forgive enemies, we can do anything we want, and we can find a mission. Now, for 30 years, I've been doing a program on spiritual healing. I've had, oh, I hate to think, hundreds of folks on. If you looked at my website, you'd almost laugh. 10 years ago, parentheses of eternity sort of fell on my head from a library. As a matter of fact, I was telling Elizabeth about that. And she said, that's interesting because a lot of people were moved by that book. I sat down and when I read that, I, 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 I couldn't move. I wept. His journey was my journey, almost. Uh, I just knew I had finally found a mentor that I could understand. I understood where, where he was going and what he was teaching, and I wanted what the infinite way had to give me. So I think I've read 50 books. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've been at it for about 10 years, but again, I think I was even teaching in a, I mean, doing the show in a school before we moved here. So it's been a while. So trying to remember that Jesus is not coming back because he never left. The Christ has never left. That's one of those myths for our those barriers that we really have to understand. And if we don't understand those, how can we be open to the mystical nature of the God within? And of course, what does that mean is the still small voice is our companion. Every hunch, every idea, every space. I mean, I even had a couple of miracles. I mean, they can be so little, but you know they're a miracle. You know, because you asked. You woke up and you said, okay, let's go. Grace, you're working with me. These are some of my concerns. I need some help on this. Or would you please talk to me all day long and tell me what to do? You are my companion. Friends, we are just never alone. And you know, when you are alone in life, like I am, you know, what, that is such a necessary part of your life that you do have companionship. You're never, ever alone. And miracles, they just happen with surrender. And you have to get rid of the myths that are, are barriers to having that companionship. You cannot hang on to two powers. I mean, we're victims to this separation. So if we're separate, we're having a bad time. 
we've got to realize we're, we're on the wrong track. We have to let go of fear, of disease, poverty. A big one is death. I mean, God goes to us with heaven. If we temporarily stop by hell, we'll go there too. He loves every creed, every country. And the master Jesus, he, he preached to the Hebrews and he tried to explain to them because they thought they were it. That was the only race there was. And as uh, the master said before Abraham was, I am. It's not just the Hebrew race. It's every living soul. And that, can you imagine we're connected to every soul? We are one soul. And look how disconnected we can be because of this dimension that we're in. So the recipe, which is a word that Joel uses, is realization. Realize the nature. Wherever you are, check in. Just remember it. Feel it. I, I mean, Joel even said he felt sometimes a little tap on his shoulder or on his head. When, and, I, and I get a deep breathing that I didn't plan on. All of a sudden, it seems to come out of nowhere where I feel like, oh, I'm being said hello to, which I love that. So that's why this particular program in 1964, which was the year that Joel transitioned, is so important. When he said to his class, you don't have to come back next week if you get this. Now, Gautama the Buddha and those who run away, those who feel like they need to go find something in this world because they don't like what they see. They go out, they look at all of the sins of the world, and they, they're confused. It's like, now what? Now with Gautama, he sits under the Bodhi tree, and all of a sudden it hit him. It hit him. I have God, I have perfection, I have everything. I can let go of all of this other worry. And Joel, my gosh, Joel always says about Jesus says, of myself, I can do nothing if I speak of myself. I am witness to a lie. The master Jesus said, it's not about me. What I do when I heal is I just see the presence in everybody. And Joel said, that's what happens to him. If someone comes to him for help, he sees their presence. And that is healing. And healings happen. And they're miraculous. And they can be easy. And I think when you get on this path, you will find growth. You will find change. You'll find, I'm, I'm, I'm having hope that I'm getting better at it. Also, I think Paul said, you know, he hadn't fully attained God. A lot of folks haven't, but everyone's on the path working hard to get there. I mean, Jesus got there, B Buddha got there. I think Meister Eckhart got there. I mean, the mystical writings throughout this world, the reason, by the way, that mystics write or preach is they have to give you hope. It's not that they're carrying on about themselves. Look what I can do. Look who I am. Aren't I something? You you know, the bread on the water comes back. The heart is full with sharing, whether you write, whether you preach, any, any form of seeing the Christ in another. And if you don't even have to open your mouth, you have to just see it. And here's another interesting clue from this book. He said near the end of this lecture, if you would take folks one week, just one week, challenge yourself, go out into the soil of your life, Go into hospitals, go into prisons, get on a bus, make a point of looking at everyone you see and be sure you let them see that you're looking at them and send them the Christ message. Send them love. You don't have to say anything. You can say anything. But for one week, he said it would be life changing. So I love that. Wherever you go, and there are plenty of places where people will love to smile back at you because they need it too. So... The infinite way is Joel Goldsmith was a retailer and he was trying to find God. His mother always said, you got to find God. And he did, you know, he had his healing with Christian science. His father was healed. That got him very much into the Christian science church, the mother church. He was a reader and he thrived on that. And he, he, he was in and out of doing well with it. But then he noticed politics. And that's why 
an invisible world is so different from a world where you've got one-upping, you've got people you could hear backbiting behind scenes. He knew that he was channeled the infinite way. He was the messenger. He was given the infinite way. And he knows it's simply invisible. We're all invisible. And I love that. And I know it firsthand because of my experience out of my body. And I always hesitate to say this, but I had a dog that I loved more than life for seven years. And when I put Miranda down, I, don't th I, I didn't think I'd survive it. I honestly, I wept forever. I didn't realize it would hit me that hard. And then six days after her death, I turned over because I was very uncomfortable. And out of my back lifted a two foot spirit. So Miranda's gift to me was, yes, I'm alive. I'm invisible. I've lost two sisters. And I had one come to me saying, and it was so interesting. She held up a pair of toe shoes because I was a toe dancer and a loaf of bread, which you could smell. She was a chef and just said, I want to tell you I'm alive. I'm fine. So you'll find mystical things happening to you when you think I'm going to realize God right now. The nature of God is what this whole infinite way is about. It's the nature of God. Now, if you were a branch on, on a tree, and I'll go over to this other camera because I want to share this. If you're a branch on the tree and you're not receiving from the source, you can wither and you can die. Now, if you're a branch on the tree and you're receiving from the source, the heavenly riches come to you. Everything comes to you and you don't ask for it. Now, I wanted to make that point because Joel says, gee, people write to me. They want a relationship. They want money. They want this. He said, that's not the way it goes. You see, if you surrender, something better comes to you that you hadn't thought of. Don't limit yourself by saying, I need a car. Don't limit yourself. This is the beauty of mysticism. When you surrender what you need, believe me, you've got to trust God has an idea better than yours. He knows what you need. He knows how to do it and let him. But don't interfere with a list, a laundry list of what you think you need. Surrender and remember that you are invisible and listen to that still small voice because even hunches, I mean, you might wonder, gee, where did that come from? I don't think I thought that. And you're right. Uh, you're right. Isn't it magical? Can you imagine a God that great with all that grace, which is covering the whole, the, to the end of the world, we have that grace. We have God with us wherever we go. He's whole, he's complete and perfect. And the heavenly riches are what you may not anticipate by surrender. Be surprised. And that's when I think you get sort of sold on the fact that the infinite way is the way to go. I had a Christian science father and I, I was blessed with practitioners in the 1800s, my grandparents. Then there were some unfortunate things that happened, but then you know what, around the dinner table, even though my Methodist mother didn't care for it, I learned. I learned some metaphysical concepts about God and purity and not accepting the fact that I was ill or there was something wrong in my life. And again, we have to surrender. And you know, it doesn't mean you don't go to doctors if you need one, because the hunch can tell you, you need to do this. This is where you need to go. So don't think I'm suggesting you don't do certain things. Let the still small voice guide you on where you are headed. It's magical. So I'm touched by the fact that I noticed the class was 1964. And I'm touched by the fact that my grandparents and father, you know, they, they planted seeds in my head and I learned from that. And also as a kid, I remember reading Letters of the Scattered Brotherhood. It's a compilation of mystics edited by Mary Strong. And you would not believe how amazing it is. It's the infinite way. And at the bottom, all these mystics have something to say, and they all have the same message. And they're all teachers. And if you ever want to confirm that they need to share, because they need the hope of what comes back to them as student teachers, and they want you to have help and hope that you're okay, and you'll be okay, and you are okay. God is with you to the end of the earth. Before Abraham was, I am. The big I am that. And, you know, 
try to rest and breathe and feel the presence. Now, when I feel it and I'm stressed about something, what I look for is my body to relax. All of a sudden, surrender. All of a sudden, it's like the stress is gone. I am not alone. And when you feel that, what a comfort, what a gift, what grace. I mean, you just can't beat the gifts that we've been given. So my friends, I'm so happy to be here today because this mission for me with the trauma, I've lost a lot. I lost a husband at 26 and I had two kids and it was like a loss for three of us. And I don't know what I would do without sharing what I needed to share to survive and to be okay. Because, you know, I can weep a lot over all kinds of loss, but that's okay too. I have a right to that. But what comforts me is I was given this, this awakenthedreamtv.org. I was given this because I vibrated to it. Um, the Christian science hit me. Um, just that first book, The Parenthesis in Eternity, it just blew my mind. And I'm so thrilled that Liz and Marty, her husband, are doing this group for those who, oh, and go, if you go to that website, um, goldsmithglobal.org, you will get instructions as to when it meets. You can have a mobile phone. You can use a computer. I'm so untechnical and scary. My kids, I, I scare my kids. I don't know. I don't want to learn anything at this age. Aren't I, aren't I brave? But you can find a way to connect and you can be with others. And there's something about being with others in a group when you can't find one. Because you know what, to be honest with you, if I tell some of my friends what, what the infinite way is about, they, all, they sort of laugh, say, okay, sure. Because it's, it can sound far out to folks who are in this dimension where, you know, they're seeing all that they're seeing. It's hard to tell them that you have heavenly riches if you dare to go deep enough and share and accept the fact that you have everything. You don't have to go to all these other places and, and fear. You have to surrender to the still small voice. Listen up, as they say. And if you can find a way to write, to teach, do a movie. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not good at suggesting creative ways. Do a painting where you show love loving one another because that's the ticket to paradise. And you'll never, ever, ever lose the grace of God within you. The minute you came in, you didn't come in alone. It's recognizing, it's identifying, it's recognition. Recognize, I love that word. And consciousness of the presence leads to freedom and liberty. So there you go. Consciousness of the presence, moment to moment, every single day and night. And that takes discipline. But once you see how it works, man, walk on water a few days. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's fabulous. So thank you. Thank you for listening to me carry on here and um, find a way to share and love thy neighbor and ask God to love your enemies if you can't do that. And thank you for joining me on Awaken the Dream. And we will talk to you again soon.